so in thinking about centrifuges, um, we have just in our department at, at least 10 different centrifuges with several different types of rotors probably for each centrifuge. And so I'm going to be showing you some of these centrifuges and some of their rotors and adapters and whatnot uh, to give you an idea of the different features that will be av available. Like I said, this is no way a comprehensive presentation of, you know, all the different kinds of centrifuges and whatnot. But here as you're just learning the basics of the operation of, of centrifuges, um, I think it's good just that you even learn the nomenclature and what we call the parts and basically how they work. This first centrifuge you see here that, that the CL2 centrifuge is the classification that we call clinical centrifuge. And, and it's a tabletop clinical centrifuge because you can see it sitting here on the table as opposed to a floor model uh, centrifuge. And so it's fairly small, uh, lightweight, so it's somewhat portable. Um, it's called clinical because this would be the type of centrifuge that would be pos possibly used in a blood, in a lab that's processing um, blood. And so it uh, has features designed for that. You could also use it in a lab that's doing cell culture um, because cells are fairly dense and don't require excessively high speeds to bring them down. And in fact, spinning them too hard can actually cause the cells to rupture uh, and kill the cells. So it's important that we, we know the, the speed required for what we're spinning. Um, so you can see it's fairly simple in that it has a speed control and a time. And that's kind of the basis of the controlling a centrifuge anyway, is, is how long it's going to spin and the speed that it's going to turn. We have a start button and a stop that also opens the lid. In our program, we principally use this clinical tabletop centrifuge for cell culture. And you can see I have it fitted here with two types of carriers, one for the 15 mil centrifuge tube and one that would hold the 50 mil centrifuge tube. You can also see uh, by standard practice that the 15 mil carriers are placed opposite each other and the 50 mil carriers are placed opposite e each other. It's very important in centrifuge operations that you consistently have the rotors balanced. So you would not want to place different sized tubes or different types of carriers opposite each other um, and because the 15 mil carriers are meant to be balanced with 15 mil tubes and the 50 mil tube um, carriers uh, should be matched also. This, as you can see, is a swinging bucket rotor so that these swing. They have the removable um, um, buckets or tube carriers that fit into these rings we call these rings trunnion rings. Um, and so this is, like I say, this is a typical uh, um, centrifuge for uh, handling um, um, sales. Here's a small mini-fuge, a mini-centrifuge, or we sometimes call them micro-centrifuge tubes um, because they're set up to spin these micro centrifuge tubes and we sometimes refer to this uh, small uh, type here as a personal centrifuge. Uh, you might call them that because in a um, molecular biotechnology lab um, they're used frequently um, just when we're pipe pipetting a lot of small volumes of materials into these tubes we all we give them quick spins to bring the liquids down, make sure that they mix, and um, uh, combine in the tube. We may actually pipette them onto the sides of the tube and use this mini-fuge to bring them down. And they're fairly inexpensive, and so that uh, each technician uh, could have, the, have their own uh, centrifuge so that it doesn't slow down your process. Um, like I say, they're used uh, uh, a lot in, in the molecular 
uh, biotechnology. Um, they can, this rotor here is interchangeable with um, this strip tube rotor that you can actually um, spin strips of PCR tubes in there. So this is kind of a specialty uh, adapter for labs that do a fair number of uh, procedures with these uh, small PCR type tubes. Okay, here we have another microcentrifuge. This one calls itself the mini spin and it also is for spinning the microcentrifuge tubes. Um, the uh, and a major difference in this one and, and the kind of personal centrifuge is this one spins at a much higher rate of speed. This particular centrifuge will go to a speed of 14,500 RPM. So it's a little bit heavier. We have our time and speed control and so we can open it and we see the rotor inside that in this case is a covered rotor uh, which prevents turbulence and um, inside we see the rotor for the microcentrifuge. This one would we would call a 12 place rotor and it has 12 places to put the tubes. So we could place the tubes into the microcentrifuge and as usual balancing them we would have tubes with equal volume in opposite places. Here we see them in position one and seven. Um, and so this is the holes in this centrifuge rotor are made specifically to handle these 1.5 mil microcentrifuge tubes. But it's also possible to spin these smaller PCR tubes by placing them in these adapters. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> these adapters which fill up the space so that we can spin the smaller tubes. Um, in these carriers. And you must always remember with these high speed microcentrifuge tubes to replace the cap on it before starting the centrifuge. Here we've got the Centra CL3, which is the big brother of the CL2 that we've already looked, looked at. And so this is a larger centrifuge. It's still considered a tabletop uh, centrifuge, but you see it's a larger, so it's a larger capacity in that we're going to see that the rotors uh, uh, can carry larger volumes. And there are a few more uh, controls on here. We still have um, uh, a speed control, although this one you can either set it for speed or reciprocal centrifugal force. Um, we have time there, and this one has rotor recognition so that it recognizes the different types of rotors so that it can actually figure the, the correlation of speed and g-forces with it. It also has the ability to control the rate of acceleration, how fast it takes to get to its speed, and how uh, fast it slows down. Um, if you have a substance, it, substance that pellets pretty tightly, you can, uh, it can afford to be uh, flown down rapidly. But if you have cells or some components that don't pack so tightly and you slow them down too fast, it can actually resuspend them by the um, slowing down braking action of the rotor. And then we have the start and the stop and the open. Okay, looking inside, we can see that it's got a little larger rotor, and it, this again is a four place or four bucket rotor, and you can see that the buckets are a little bit larger, so we have a higher capacity. Here we see a carrier that we can put in that has two uh, 50 mil tubes. Uh, we have carriers that hold multiple smaller test tubes. 
and there's a, a whole assortment of other types of rotors that can be used uh, in this uh, or carriers that can be used in this rotor in this centrifuge. Um, these carriers can also be fitted with these aerosol containment caps if you were spinning blood or a hazardous uh, liquid you can use these caps so that if the tube cracks or the lid would crack or some something would happen to the tube that contained your liquid in the carrier and doesn't <coughs> release it into the centrifuge So all these different size adapters just give the centrifuge uh, a lot of flexibility in the types of tubes and samples you can uh, centrifuge. In fact, I'm going to take this rotor out. And replace it with this rotor here. That's pretty simple. Now this rotor, I'll put its carriers in. And so this is what we actually call a microplate rotor. And so it can actually spin plates in the microplate format and spin, you'd have to have a balance plate, but it can actually spin those 96 well plates and other plates that have the similar uh, dimensions um, to to bring them down. Now this type of rotor would, um, because of its kind of lack of aerodynamics, would have a slower, would have a, a, a lower maximum speed uh, than, uh, than other types of rotors. But, so these are just two rotors for this centrifuge and there are other uh, also rotors that are available to um, give centrifuges, uh, like I say, a lot of flexibility. Okay, and going along with this idea of the flexibility of the lab centrifuge with a, a variety of rotors and adapters, um, here we have what's called an air shielded rotor. Um, the typical swinging bucket rotor, uh, we like those because the swinging buckets swing uh, horizontally so that our materials are pelleted uh, into the bottom of the tube, but they have limitations to the, to their, the speed that they can spin because they're kind of open and they create a lot of turbulence and friction that causes heat while they're spinning. Um, so uh, in order to have the same swinging bucket arrangement and be able to spin them at a higher uh, speed, then this type of rotor we call an air shielded rotor. You can see that this one says that it has 13,000 RPM maximum, which is a lot faster than we, we get with a standard uh, swing bucket. You can see that these buckets, in fact, do swing out to horizontal, but they're contained in this heavy shielded outer container. And um, so then we could have our tube inside an adapter then that would fit inside this swing bucket. So um, there are tubes that would fit into that carrier without an adapter. This particular size tube is just a little bit smaller and requires this adapter. So as usual, this rotor comes with a number of adapters for the different types of tubes you can, um, can get. It's important to have matched uh, adapters because when you get to spinning tubes at high speed, they really need uh, to be supported uh, so that they don't collapse or be compressed uh, crushed basically by the speed, uh, the g-forces that are being created. So here's another type of rotor um, in case that we need more g-forces than we can get from uh, our swinging bucket rotor, we can go to this fixed, fixed angle rotor. This one has a maximum speed of 22,500 RPM and we can see then that it's basically a big solid hunk of metal with the individual tube places around it. Now in this case, so the tube would fit directly into there. This is the proper size tube for this rotor, so it is supported 
uh, by the uh, rotor. But being a fixed angle rotor, the G force is going kind of kind of to this point here. We'll pellet the material on the side of the tube on the lower end rather than uh, in the bottom. Like I said, this is a, a heavy um, metal rotor. Uh, They're now making uh, equivalent rotors in out of carbon fiber, uh, which actually um, can have a, a, a longer life and be less expensive than these precisely machined um, metal rotors because these have to be, at the speeds they're turning, have to be perfectly balanced. Here we have uh, just a bucket off of a uh, swinging bucket rotor. I didn't bring the whole heavy rotor here, but this is one of four buckets that go in the centrifuge. And you can see this bucket is specifically made to carry a conical bottom plastic uh, centrifuge bottle. And so that the carrier is conical and there's even a conical adapter that is in there so that it's very important with these conical tubes that this adapter supports this cone because with the force on on this tip it could easily compress uh, compress that tube if it weren't supported. Um, here's another bucket from that same centrifuge. It's just a standard open bucket that would take either a large bottle or a wide variety of those uh, adapters. And I've just included one particular adapter here just to show you a, a centrifuge bottle. We're not just working with tubes. We just saw the conical centrifuge bottle. And this is a, a centrifuge bottle. Uh, you can see it's made out of a, 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 a plastic capable of handling at high speed. And it has even a gasketed cap so that the actual liquid in any uh, that is uh, in there uh, helps contain it. Any of these kind of tubes and bottles and whatnot that you um, use in a centrifuge, you have to be aware of what the manufacturer's stated maximum G-forces that it can handle. Um, because um, um, centrifuge bottles and tubes uh, are made for specific uses, and um, but they're not universal uh, uses. So there are uh, materials that can handle uh, um, um, 1,000 Gs but can't handle 12,000 Gs or whatnot. So it's important when you're using a centrifuge that you know the specifications on the container that uh, you're using to prevent failure of that container and loss of your sample and uh, an unhappy centrifuge. 